You can never make me feel envy When I know deep down you feel empty That's why you overcompensating Your moves don't match what you be saying I wanna stay but you be playing How many times I gotta say this What's up game? Welcome back to my channel My name is Janique and I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in today If this is your first time joining me Make sure you go ahead and lock into my channel By clicking on that subscribe button And also by clicking on the notification bell That way you never miss an episode of anything that it is that I do here now, if you are a returning subscriber or a new subscriber, anything, if you subscribe, period, I love you so much. I appreciate you so much. I see our count is going up, so our family is growing, and I just cannot wait to see what kind of things that we're going to be diving into on this channel. You know, God reveals things slowly at a time, but I have faith that if we keep the faith, and if I keep the faith, he's coming on here and giving you guys a message that he puts on my heart that will eventually make the world a better place. Our family is growing. So make sure you allow the people in the comments that do happen to comment, make them feel comfortable by not commenting negativity under their comments or negativity at all. This is a safe, positive place in order for you to heal your relationship with yourself and with God. So we wanna make sure we keep that pretty consistent, not only on the videos, but also in the comments. So just for future reference, in case you decide to comment today. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about boundaries. So if you want to hear more about reinforcing the boundaries that you have set for your life, make sure you stick around to the end of the video. Let's go ahead and hop into our topic. Now, in order for us to set boundaries in our life, first of all, we have to know what the definition of a boundary is. So a boundary is a line that limits an area, limits a subject. It's a dividing line. It's a line drawn in the sand. So boundaries are something that people are going to have to adhere to to be in your life. I know that's how I feel about myself, so I hope you feel the same way. Now, people in our lives test our boundaries consistently, constantly, constantly. They know that you're upset about the boundary that they may have crossed, but they're going to do it anyway. There's a scripture in the Bible where uh, Yahshua actually says, if your neighbor slaps one cheek, turn the other cheek and allow them to slap the other as well. And recently, God gave me a revelation about that verse because I was thinking the whole time, allow people to do things over and over to you. But that's not what he said to me the other day. He told me the other day that it doesn't, in fact, mean you allow them to do things to you over and over again. It means that they're going to do something else to you again. It says, turn the other cheek and allow them to slap the other one because they're going to try you again. That's why I say enforcing boundaries is so important because these people will try you consistently unless you stop them where they're at. Basically, this is going to be putting people in their place. Like I saw a meme the other day that says, I know your lane sucks, sis, but stay in it. And that's how we want to talk to the people who try us. I know your lane sucks. I know the lane that you have chosen for yourself to be negative, to be chaotic to be a problem for me i know that lane sucks but you're going to have to stay in it over there you can't come in my space and do it anymore when i was growing up i actually took a leadership class in high school and it was taught by one of my favorite teachers who told me one day basically um that people who allow other people to control them uh, are like remotes she says you allow them to press your buttons and turn you to the channel that they want to see they they control you. They make you act a certain way. That's why people do things anyway. People do things to make you act certain ways. They're going to test your boundaries. And if you don't enforce them, they're going to be able to control everything you do. She asked me if I was a remote. I said, no, I'm not a remote. She's like, do you want to be a remote? I said, I don't want to be a remote. She was like, well, you have to put the power back in your own hands. So no matter what a person does, you react the same way every time. You don't allow this person to change your channel or take you out of character. They can test your boundary all day long, but at the end of the day, a boundary is a boundary. If it's set in stone, it is set in stone. Nobody can go past it. It's almost like the gate that they're trying to build for immigrants not to cross over to the U.S. Uh, once that boundary is up, that boundary is going to be up. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So I just think boundaries should be set in stone. I don't think you should be letting boundaries down for other people if you have a boundary that you have set a boundary really kind of like a standard if you have a boundary that you have set and this person crosses that boundary what they're going to be telling themselves is oh you forgave me for this i know you forgive me for anything else because in their head they will never forgive you for what you forgave them for period they would never if you had done it to them they wouldn't even be able to take it so when you forgive them for that, they think it's going to be okay to play with you for the rest of their life. And that's where they're sadly mistaken. So let's let's talk about how to enforce these boundaries. 
Now I have a couple of examples about how I did this in the past and how it allowed me to keep the peace that I have today and to also maintain my freedom because some people will get you started character to where you lose your freedom. You will go to jail. You understand? You see these cases all the time where people flip. <laughs> they flip. They flip because somebody tried them and they just didn't know how to handle it. But that's why if you have your boundary set, you already are aware of if your boundary is crossed, how you're going to react. You have to plan everything out. Talk to yourself, okay? People, when I was growing up, my mom always when I was growing up, my mom always used to say, Janique, don't talk to yourself. People are gonna think you're crazy. I don't care what people think, mom. I don't I could care less. I wish I could talk to her right now and tell her that, Mom, I don't, I don't care if they think I'm crazy for talking to myself. They don't want you to discuss things with yourself because then you know you're talking to God. They want you to discuss things with the people in your life, and that's how they keep crossing those boundaries because they're all in your business. So one friend I had in particular, I don't know what her issue was, but she always used to call me to basically come turn her party up or or to make her look good in front of her male friends because she had a lot of male friends, right? This one time in particular, I got a call from her, a FaceTime call, and she was showing me the guy's house that she was at. It was lovely. I was like, well, whose house are you at? And she started talking to me about him. I said, well, how does he look? And he was like, I'm trying to get her to tell you to come over here. So I hear him in the background. I'm like, put him on the phone. I talked to him for a second. I was like, you know, I'm a head over there, girl. So I'm thinking she all cool with it, right? And she told me it was strictly platonic. She was over there with three other guys. But she was like, it's strictly platonic. We all friends. She always has male friends and stuff like that. So I'm just thinking, like, I'm just going to hang out with these people, right? When I get over there, she starts taking shots at me, like, just subtle, subtle shots where... A real friend wouldn't say that to you. You ever see these TikToks where it say how your friends be hating on you when you around somebody or something like that? And they be yelling out all kind of crazy stuff. And and half of it may not even be true, but it's just them trying to get people to see you in a different type of light. Um, so I let it slide that night, but we went back over there for the guy to cook for us a few days later. And it was me, her, and one other friend I have. And the other friend, I bought her along the first time, but uh, she told me she told me that she thought the girl was tripping too, right? So I just wanted to make sure that somebody, I had a witness that saw this. And then the guy who, because I spent some time with the guy who wanted me to come over, and he was telling me, he was like, is that really your friend? I was like, why? He was like, because she was talking a lot of like mess about you. I was like, is it really mess? He was like, no, those little slick shots. He's like, I don't do that with my friends. So it just looked a little weird to me. And I was like, you know what? I noticed that. But that's just how she is. That's how I hate when people do that. That's how this person is. That's how they are. Uh, they need to change. That's not an excuse. You telling me that's how you are as a justification for why you're acting like a hater? Like a hater? That that, that does nothing for me. So, um, so, <laughs> so, I ended up having a party at my house, right? And uh, I had all the guys over, the girls, and I had some other people, right? The girl came into my home and started shooting off firecrackers, right? Now, I'm like, I would never, I would never do that to somebody. So I, I pulled her aside. I said, do you think it's okay to shoot fireworks in my home? Like, why do you think that? I pay, I pay the rent here. My neighbors are my neighbors. I got to do everything here to make sure I stay here. But why would you come into my home shooting firecrackers? And I said, would you do that in your mama's house? And I think her parents had passed away at that time. I think I actually said grandma's house because her parents are, are passed away. So I think she really going through something. So you got to take that into consideration as well. But um, she said, uh, yeah, I would do that in my grandma's house. I said, that is so sad. It, it's really sad, you know, that people would disrespect your home like that. But that was a boundary she had crossed. And I was really done with it that day, right? We went over to the guy's house for him to cook for us a few days later. And during this time, she starts talking. She starts taking slick shots again. Like she's she's talking about my tattoos. She's just talking about everything. But it hit me. I said, <laughs> you're doing this because you like this guy. Like, <laughs> And I couldn't stop laughing. So when she said what she said, I said to her, I said, do you like him? She said, what? I said, do you like him? She said, what are you talking about? He has like this crazy smile on his face. And I said, why now that we're in front of people, because me and her hang out all the time together by ourselves or at the time we did. I said, why in front of all these people you keep talking, like taking these little slick shots? What is this? Like, what? Like, I don't do that with my friends. You haven't heard me and her do it all night. Like, what are you doing? She was like, I'm just joking. No, you're not. Because behind every joke is a little bit of the truth. Stop it. You're not joking. Stop it. It sounds you're sounding like a hater. Like you've been going in on me since I walked in the door. Like relax. And the reason I told her to relax is because if I sat right here and really 
ate you up like I could, you would have your feelings hurt. You'd be crying for weeks if I sat right here and told you what I, I could sit right here and see physically and think about you. Like you would be hurt. But I choose to hold my tongue back from people when they cross that boundary because I, I have so much self-control. So I just call it out as I see it. And she actually ended up leaving. She left. <laughs> That's how you know I told the truth because if it wasn't the truth, why not stay? No, you got uncomfortable because I saw you for who you were and you decided to exit the, the room because you, you couldn't take the heat. So you exited the kitchen. You get what I'm saying? But that changed our relationship forever because it helped me see that she was really insecure and me being around her and getting attention from some guy she may have liked or may not have liked, who knows? But it triggered her. And uh, that boundary that I had set that day, it set the mold for the rest of our relationship because... Not only did she understand that you can't just be talking mess, especially in front of other people, right? You can't also do it. My my other friend also was able to witness that and she saw that she can't do that either, right? So I was able to enforce a boundary that day. Now, fast forward a little bit. The friend who was the observer in this situation, um, we ended up getting into it um, maybe like a year later. But we ended up, it wasn't a full year. It was like six months. But we ended up getting into it six months later about, we were just discussing like Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. And she was going super hard for Megan Thee Stallion. And uh, at the time she was dating somebody who, who had an accusation against him for something against a woman. And I said to her, I said, uh, why are you riding this hard for Megan Thee Stallion? Like what's going on? She's like, we gotta protect our black women. I said, well, a black woman told you something and you didn't believe her. So, and I'm just stating facts in this argument. She's like, she hung up on me. Her hanging up on me, it hit me because it's like, we don't do that. I don't hang up on nobody unless I'm trying to disrespect them. Because a boundary, when someone respects your boundary, it shows you that they respect you. Right? It's the respect thing at the end of the day. People that don't respect you are going to cross your boundaries every time. So when she hung up on me, my first instinct is to call her back because that's my friend, right? It's my friend. I clearly said something to trigger you, even though I didn't. I clearly said something to trigger you, even though I didn't mean to, but I'm I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. If you thought I was wrong in that moment, who am I to discount your feelings? So I call her back. The girl got me blocked or something. Like, I, the call's not going through. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. But we've been friends for two years, at least, right? So I'm like, that's interesting. But I had been looking for a reason to cut her off anyway, because she, she had done a whole lot of shady stuff for about two years anyway. So I was already looking for a reason to cut her off, but I didn't have one at the time. We we had been good. She had apologized and everything. So we had been good, but God was like, you know what? I'm going to give you a way out. So when she did that, I ended up blocking her back and I moved on with my day because it's like, if you can't even have a simple conversation with me, what kind of friend are you? I'm not saying anything personal. I'm not, I'm not attacking you in any way. I'm just letting you know. If you're going to protect black women in this instance, let's protect them all the time. Don't say you want to protect black women when it comes to a celebrity. But when it comes to somebody we really know in real life, you're not on their side. You understand? So uh, that's just where I was coming from with this. So I ended up unblocking the girl. And the first thing she said to me was like, damn, can we talk now? Relax, because you set a boundary with me when you hung up on me over the information that I said to you. So clearly you have set a boundary with me that I can't cross. I know now that I can never, never, never say nothing like that to you, okay? And you hung up on me. Now you know you can't just hang up on me and block me after when I'm trying to apologize for nothing really. But uh, I didn't want to talk then. I wasn't ready to talk. You know, she wasn't ready to talk in the moment. So I wasn't ready to talk then. So I ignored her, kept it moving. And uh, she starts hitting my phone with all these messages talking about how I'm just so prideful and I have all this pride in our relationship and all this other stuff that I can't just apologize to. I'm like, I called you to apologize. Relax. I called you immediately after. You had me blocked. What, what'd you do? She was like, well, I was mad in that moment. And come to find out, she had a whole lot of stuff going on with her relationship that, that caused her to act like that. Instead of just being honest, you get what I'm saying? You choose to take your anger and frustration out on me when we were having a simple conversation about Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. Anyway, like, it was so stupid. So I ended up taking a step back from her then because it just told me really, I don't know you as well as I thought I knew you because if I did... I don't think that little situation would have happened. That little blow up would, would, would have happened. It caused us not to talk for a month. And even when we got back into communication with each other and we, we decided to talk or whatever, the disconnect, the disrespect was already there. I was already catching the disrespect anyway. 
in the relationship and I don't think people recognize that. When I sit right here and try to be a friend to you for all this time and I let so much stuff slide, I don't care if it's something little that I finally decide to be like, you know what, this friendship is over. At the end of the day, you should have been cut off. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying it's so important to enforce the boundaries in your life. You can't let people start bypassing those boundaries up front and early because they'll never stop. Let me tell you guys about a date I recently went on. So, so um, I met a guy last last year, it's probably June or July last year. And we texted for a little minute, maybe like a day or two, but probably wasn't even a full day because he was boring me so bad and I'm just not a texter. So I just stopped texting back. And I guess he took it as me ghosting him, of course, which I did because I, I just wasn't responding. I wasn't interested for real. And, uh, because physically he wasn't my type. I just, when I got that feeling that I'm not really interested in somebody, I, I follow it because normally I'm right. There's never really been a time that my feeling told me not to date somebody or not to talk to somebody and I was wrong about it. So I try to trust that feeling. So um, I had the guy hit me up. He hit me up last week and I was like, okay, um, who is this? <laughs> and he told me his name again. And I'm just like, I know a bunch of people. My bad, my alarm went off. I got somewhere to go, so I can't make this video too much longer. But I had a, <laughs> the guy hit me up. He, he told me his name. I'm like, I know a bunch of people with this name. And I didn't even respond because I'm like, I know so many people with this name. I didn't want to ask like, blah, 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 who? You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to move on with my day because I saw I wasn't texting him back already. So I'm just like, who is this? So he sends me a picture. I'm like, oh, it's you. <laughs> I'm like, how, how can I help you? He was like, well, I think we didn't give each other a fair chance last time. Um, he's like, because you went MIA on me. I said, you know, my bad. What's up? What, what do you want to do? He's like, I want to take you out. I'm still interested. I was like, okay, well, we can go out. You know, he was like, are you going to go MIA on me again? But he kept bringing it up. So when he kept bringing up the fact that I went MIA, I asked him, I said, did you come back to remind me that I went MIA on you, that I ghosted you? He's like, no, that was my last time bringing it up. I said, okay, fair. Let, let's not bring it up again then. So he was like, let's go out tonight. We make the plans or whatever like that. So we're supposed to meet at a certain time, right? I get there on time, maybe a few minutes late because I like to make a, make a statement. But I get there and he's like, oh, I'm not there yet. He lives near the place. He's like, oh, I'm not there yet. I'm going to leave now. Like, just go ahead and go inside and buy yourself a drink. I'm like, go buy myself a drink. I said, you want me to go inside by myself? And I look good, right? I said, you want me to go inside by myself? He's like, yeah, go buy yourself a drink. I was like, okay. No problem. I got the phone with him and my first instinct is to be like, leave. Just go ahead and go back home. But I was like, you know what? I got to show him something tonight. So let me let me show him what's up. I get out the car. I go inside the place. And so I meet somebody outside. They come inside. They be like, come on, let's go outside. I'm going to buy you a drink. Get me a drink. Here comes the guy that I was supposed to go on a date with a few minutes later, right? So he's like, oh, you already got a drink? I'm like, yeah, you told me to come in and get a drink. So... uh. <laughs> Do you know, do you know he wanted to sit down and he kept wanting to move tables? So I get upset because he wanted to move back to the original table we started at. I said, sit your ass down. Just sit down. He gets upset. He talked about, I want to wear the pants in a relationship. I said, no, I don't want to wear the pants. I want somebody who's decisive. We just moved from that place and now you want to go back. But I think he was playing with me. You get what I'm saying? If I really thought you wanted to move, like it was a genuine thing, I would not mind it. But I think he was trying to play with me. He was trying to see if he could make me do stuff. And uh, we, so we ended up just staying where we was at, which I liked. But he kept making smart comments. So he was talking about the way I chew gum. He was talking about me saying, every time he said something to me, like he brought up me going in my ear again, I repeated it to him. Not for, not to be like, you know, funny or anything, but to basically let you hear what you just said to me because you just said earlier, you wasn't talking about that no more. So why are we still bringing it up? That's my boundary. You're crossing my boundary. I literally... Just told you earlier, like, did you hit me up to, to talk about that? And you said no, so why are we bringing it up again? I said, do you feel some type of way about me ghosting you? He said, no. I said, you sure? Because that's like your third or fourth time bringing it up. Twice since we've been here, but third or fourth time since uh, you start talking to me earlier. He said, I know me bringing it up again and again can make it seem like I give a fuck, but I really don't. <laughs> it was so funny because People think they're so smart. They think they're smarter than you. And I think he's 35. Yeah, I'm 29, right? People think they're so smarter than you. Like, they think you can't figure them out because you're a youngin'. Like, bro, I read you. Soon as you 
first of all, you're late to our date. As soon as he was late, that's why I didn't leave because I knew good and well you were trying to try me. I know you feel some type of way about me ghosting you. Everybody who said they don't care when you ghost him, they are lying. They're lying. They care. It bothers them. It hurts their soul. I'm probably one of the few people in life that don't care if you ghost them because I don't really get ghosted. I'm the one that normally does the ghosting. But um, <laughs> I said, because he's a black man, and I think people do that. I think people do discount black men feelings a lot because they want them to appear hard all the time. But I'm not one of those people. I don't I don't look at you as soft because you want to express yourself or you want to tell me how you feel or you want to talk something out. I, I respect that. I think it's strength and vulnerability. So I would never laugh at a black man trying to tell me how he really feels. But I'm going to laugh at a black man that's trying to act like he don't feel no type of way when you clearly feel some type of way about what I did. Because people think they that nigga. And that's what it is. But I'm here to show you that you're not. That's my job here. To show people that they're not who they think they are. So, uh, the guy, he kept doing like little stuff. He kept saying little stuff. I remember one time, but we were drinking. One time I, I said, I'm going to leave. He like, no. <laughs> no, I said, you need to straighten up. Like, I said, because if you feel some type of way about that, just talk to me. Like, you ain't got to do all this passive aggressive stuff he was like no i'm cool i swear like it, he's like, i felt type of way but i don't feel no type of way like at all like i wouldn't even hit you up if i felt no type of way but anyway he did he kept trying me all night really and not only is he taking jabs at me all night he's also um upset because i won't let him touch me bro i don't know you you understand like i don't know you you came out of nowhere like we stopped talking in july we only talked for a day or two. Like, you came out of nowhere. Of course, I'm apprehensive. I don't know you. Yeah, I'm not going to let you touch me. So be cautious of those men who cross that, that touching boundary as well. Because I'm not just going to let you touch on me because you got me a drink. Hell, you were late. This other guy bought me a drink. And then he gets mad. Oh, my God. <laughs> he get mad because he's like, what'd you buy? I said, I didn't buy this. He said, who bought you a drink? I said, you told me to come in earlier. So why why it matter? You told me to come in by myself and somebody decided to buy me a drink. He's like, I'm not finna toast with you when you are drinking a drink somebody else bought you. I said, well, if you had been in here on time, then nobody would have had an opportunity to buy me a drink. So he's upset about that as well. So he starts buying me drinks. But like I said, we, we, we ended the night. We had fun because we got drunk. But at the same time, we was like, I was so done with him. I knew I was never going to see him again. So the next day he starts texting me like, oh, I was drunk last night or like, uh, hey, how you doing? What you got going on? Whatever. I wasn't replying back and he starts calling my phone. So I finally answered the phone. I'm like, what's up? He like, you know, I wanted to apologize. <laughs> I love that because if you are silent enough on a person after they do something to you as opposed to going off on them, because that's what they want you to do. They want you to get out of your character and go off on them for crossing your boundary. But that's not what I do. My approach is a little different. I'm going to stay silent instead when you cross my boundary because I don't have the energy to give to you. You're not worth it. You're not worth it. You tried me and you're not worth it. So um, he's lucky I even answered the phone, but I wanted to put him out of his misery because he was so upset when I guessed when I uh because he was so upset when I ghosted him last time. So I wanted to just put him out of his misery real quick and let him know about himself. Because at the end of the day, if we tell people about themselves, it can prevent them from doing the same thing they did to you to another person. Because you don't know if the other person is strong enough to handle whatever they just put you through. So I saved a, I saved a woman that night. I know I did because when he called me, he, he started apologizing for his behavior and what he did. And I sat right here. And listen to everything he said, his whole apology and everything. And he let me know I was completely right. He let me know the reason he was acting like that was because he felt some type of way about me ghosting him. He just did not want to admit it. He did not want to admit it to me. He didn't want me to, to know I was right. He said, but I was completely spot on. I love when God just brings revelations to me. I didn't even ask for that. So I told him I appreciate the apology, but... I'm going to let you know, I wasn't happy with last night. I wasn't happy with the way the date went. I thought it was horrible and I don't ever see myself seeing you again. And I ran down a list of reasons and things that happened on this date that verified he was cringing when I was talking. But he said he would understand if I didn't want to talk to him anymore. I let him know I'm not interested. I wasn't, I wasn't interested before, but you knew that. And you tried it anyway and I'm still not interested. So he starts texting me like, oh, you left something in my car. <laughs> Just trying to get some more of my energy. I said, throw it away. It was some earrings or something. I'm like, earrings, throw it away. He's like, um, 
you he starts texting me again the next day like apologizing some more and let me know how sweet and kind i am and how i didn't deserve what he was doing that night and everything like let it go you've crossed the boundary already and i'm going to enforce that because at the end of the day if i forgive you for this what you're going to do next time to me will be way worse so I hope these examples really kind of explain to you the types of things people will do to get under your skin and why they want to cross your boundary in the first place. You trigger them. You have made them feel like they are not who they have made up in their head to be because at the end of the day, everybody is portraying themselves to be this false character when it's time for people to start being real. That guy, we probably could have went somewhere if he had did. Maybe, maybe you were late because you were upset. You know what I'm saying? And you didn't do anything else that night. But you constantly, constantly, constantly slapped me on the other cheek all night. Like you slapped me multiple times at night. Not not literally, but figuratively. He slapped me multiple times that night. You you get what I'm saying? So I allowed him to do whatever he wanted to do. Listen, if that's how you want to act, if that's the first impression you want to leave on me or the last impression because I'll never see you again, that's completely up to you. As is everybody in this world. You understand? Like these people, if they want to cross the boundary you have set for yourself, let them do it. Cool. You just, you are not meeting the requirements to be in my life and that's okay. All right. When you can control yourself a little better, maybe I'll allow you back in. But I don't really see that happening because at the end of the day, change is hard. And it's hard because people have to want to change it. Who wants to change when things are working for them already? People don't want to do that. People only want to change when things are not working in their favor, when the way that they've been doing things is not not working out for them anymore. That's the only time people want to change. The only reason the guy tried to call me and apologize was because he realized when he met me, he realized I was the poop. You, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying? He realized that and he actually wanted to probably be with me. He was talking about kids and marriage and everything all night. Oh my God, at the end of the day, he asked me to be his girlfriend. So I know he was embarrassed. <laughs> I know he was embarrassed because when he asked me to be his girlfriend multiple times and i'm like no we me you will never be will never be one that's what i'm saying i try to stay away from dating anyway like i wasn't going out there looking for a man the man came to me you know what i'm saying that's the only reason i went on a date with him i'm trying to really stay out of dates stay away from dates right now because at the end of the day these people need healing until i can reach everyone out in the world to give them this healing that i have here on this channel i can't talk to nobody you understand these people are broken and misery loves company they do i don't i don't understand people they hate what you stand for because you show them who they should be that's why people hate me. I show them who they should be. I show them the characteristics that they can never, never, never exhibit to other people. You understand? I show people grace consistently. And when it's their time to show me a little grace, guess what? They don't have it for me. You understand? So make sure you enforce the boundaries in your life. Be it people cannot curse at you. People cannot talk to you any kind of way. People can't just come over to your house. I had a friend who got mad because she, she tried to come over to my house randomly. Like, <laughs> Can I just pull up at your crib? Okay, if I can't just pull up at your crib, don't be trying to just pull up to mine. You understand? It doesn't work like that. Um, I had my baby daddy. He got upset because I wouldn't let him smack me on my butt. Bro, we were broken up for years. No, you cannot just smack me on the butt. No, I don't want you touching me. We're broken up. Like, I don't understand people. So... And he got upset when I when I confronted him. But you have to confront the people who are crossing your boundaries when given the opportunity, okay? You don't want to flip out or break character or anything. But when somebody crosses your boundary, you got to let them know, like, this is not acceptable. And I will not tolerate it, period, point blank. You understand? So hopefully I gave you some tools in order to make sure you keep the boundaries in your life alive and well. Don't just settle for anything, man. Like, you got to have some boundaries that people just cannot cross, man. People shouldn't be able to just hang up in your face. You understand? They think they can just call you and talk. You know, people can't just talk mess behind your back or tell their boyfriends your business and think you're going to keep confiding in them. People can't just sit right here and borrow your things, you understand, and not give it back. People can't sit right here and borrow money from you and not give it back. People can't sit right here and know that you're looking for a relationship and they still try to have sex with you 24 7 when you're looking for marriage you're looking to reserve yourself until marriage or you're looking to not have sex until marriage like people are going to test your boundaries constantly if you let them but if, if you enforce your boundaries you'll get your desired outcome okay i hope you got some from my message today if you did make sure you check out some of my other messages and i will see you in the next video janique here janique tv peace